All right. Um, I thought I would uh, show you the uh, my inter my uh, take on the uh, Gigatron TTL computer since I, I built my own uh, TTL. Didn't quite finish it, but sort of lost interest. But um, it did what I wanted it to do. Um, so here is a TTL uh, computer. Um, and it is a kit. You can buy it, put it together, and run it um, if you have the money. It's quite expensive. It's a little over $200 um, to get the kit, uh, but it is all TTL. Um, it runs VGA and actually runs programs and stuff. Um, I would point you over to the EEV blog where Dave actually builds one of these, and uh, you can see it, see it running. Um, I'm more interested in the uh, block diagram and to see how um, they went about uh, designing a TTL computer. Everybody designs one's a little bit different, and it'll be interesting to see how they design this one. But we can just take a look at the picture here. Um, the first thing that we see is there's a very large ROM, um, and they're using a 16-bit ROM uh, in order to output a lot more signals, and that would make it easier. Um, the RAM is about the same RAM that I chose. Um, it has some registers, it has an instruction register, data register. Um, it has a um, condition decoding. Uh, I think that's probably for carry and uh, uh, zeros and things like that. There's an instruction decoder down here at the bottom, which is actually diode logic. Um, there's a bunch of diode logic at the bottom for address decoding and, and instruction decoding. Uh, so that's interesting. Um, that's very like a real CPU. Uh, you'll see a diode logic in, in a real CPU. Uh, there's some registers at the top here. Uh, there's a um, very wide uh, bus. It's, it's not just an 8-bit bus, but there's also 16-bit buses inside. We'll, we'll see that in the block diagram. So there's a high register and a low register. Um, the accumulator, he didn't use one of the available TTL accumulators. Not sure why. He just wanted to build his own, I guess. Um, so his, uh, his accumulator, I believe, is 10 ICs. Um, so he decided to roll his own. Uh, there's like some I.O. There's uh, four little LEDs that he can turn on and off. Um, and more importantly, he has a, a VGA. So he bit bangs a, a VGA and actually displays color information and you can play games and stuff on it. It's quite amazing. So let's go ahead and see if, see the block diagram. Let's talk about that. Uh, this is the block diagram. Um, uh, this might be a bit small on your screen, but we'll zoom in on it. Um, there is an 8-bit bus, this blue bus here. So there's an 8-bit bus floating around. Uh, but internal, uh, the uh, memory uh, bus is 16-bit. and um, is that the only 16-bit bus? It might. Oh no, no. The uh, program counter is also 16-bit. So there's 16 bits going into the ROM, which has the program, and 16 bits going into the RAM. So it's a 16-bit address space and an 8-bit uh, data space. Um, so let's zoom in. A, let's zoom in a bit here. Um, all right. So we have. Oops. So we have a. Uh, a reset into the program counter. The program counter is designed with four ICs. They're just counters. I couldn't find a schematic for it. I think you have to buy the kit to get the uh, uh, user manual, which I believe has a schematic. Um, uh, that very large ROM, which has 16-bit outputs, it's split into the instruction register and the data register. And then the CU is the command, uh, red, uh, command decoding. Um, and then uh, you can just send data right onto the bus. So let's zoom down here. Um, the, uh, this is the address uh, register, uh, which is 16 bits, goes into the RAM, and then the RAM is on the bus with uh, eight bits. Uh, like I said, the ALU was uh, homegrown with uh, 10 bits. And then there are some uh, ways to get data into the ALU. Um, it is an a, a, uh, ALU that will handle 8 bits in register 1, 8 bits in register 2, and then 8 bits on the output. So you can do a uh, you know an 8, uh, a, a byte wide add, and then output that. Um, there is an accumulator 
um, and in good fashion, the output of the ALU can go back into the accumulator. Uh, the accumulator splits off and goes into the ALU again, and an 8 bits comes out to a um, uh, output device. Uh, it has four bits of audio and four, four LEDs that you can light up. And then here's a bus AC, bus accumulator. I'm not quite sure what that is. I guess once you've done the ALU operation, you can also go stick that onto the bus. That's probably what that is. Um, there's an input, um, eight bits in onto the bus, and a clock chip. Um, so it's uh, quite similar to what uh, what we developed, or what, what I developed. Um, it runs very fast. I think it runs at six megahertz. Um, it's all on a single PC board. Uh, unfortunately, you can't single step it. Uh, they say you can overclock it by changing the crystal, but I don't believe you can single step it. And you certainly can't see. I wish they had put some option of putting some LEDs internal so you can watch it operate. Um, so you can't watch it operate. It just goes. Um, so that's that's maybe they'll come up with a different version that's better for uh, for, for uh, teaching. Um, but if you want a TTL computer, here's one. Um, and like I said, I think uh, they did a great design uh, and actually they can run programs and stuff. Um, and yeah, uh, if I ever get a hold of schematics, uh, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll run through those. The the chips. If you, there is a parts list, and the chips that are used are very, very generic chips. Uh, counters, registers, uh, multiplexers, uh, very, very boring chips. So um, he really went back to basics. I think he really wanted to build a, a, a C, CPU that was built on very, very fundamental ICs. Um, so he did a good job of that. Or they, I'm not, I'm not sure if it was a collaborative effort or a single person did this. Um, I believe it was done in Germany. Anyway. Um, looks great.